You've been a part of our coaches development program for three years, I want to say, and now part of affiliate you, have you, have you felt like both of those have impacted your coaching? Yeah. If we looked at a video prior to this, there would be a starch difference in what we were looking at. A wise man once said you should be embarrassed of the coach you once be. And when that wise man said that the internet lost their minds because they're a bunch of softies and get so worked up and are afraid to get offended at anymore. But yes, you should be embarrassed of who you were because you've worked so hard to become a better version of yourself. Play it off as your own. But one of my go-tos is, hey guys, I want you to come uncomfortably close. And in the last video I watched of yours, they were a little further out and I told you, bring them in, bring them in. So great job with that. Yeah, come in, come in, I know. What a, and a key. Do you speak Spanish? Just enough. I love how close you brought them in. Sometimes you have your whiteboard or TVs or whatever you're using in a place that's there's distraction happening behind there. Where you put your whiteboard matters. Now, the goal for the workout is for you guys to finish seven plus rounds. The way this workout works, you're gonna do round one. It's gonna be one power clean, one handstand push up. Round two, two power cleans, two handstand push ups. The goal is for you guys to get as far as possible, finishing at least seven plus rounds. So we're going for something weight wise that you guys can do at least five power cleans in a row on the handstand push ups. We want to also be able to do at least five handstand push ups in a row. So I love it. So here's the whiteboard brief big picture stimulus I'm looking for. I need you to get seven rounds. What does that mean? Dig deeper. Here's how you get there. What you just did is establish that. I always think a macro approach, I'm gonna start real broad. Now I'm gonna sink in a little bit. Whatever that looks like, set your members up, show them how they can get there. I gave you feedback previously on your whiteboard brief and your general warm up. What's one thing you implemented aside from bringing them in a little bit closer in that whiteboard brief based on the feedback I gave you? Clarifying if they're still working on handstand push ups and providing scaling options. You like to ask for injuries. I personally don't like to ask for injuries. The way I like to do it is if we have any limitations. If you've taken your level two, um, we, we, we talk about it in setting up your lesson plan. Like you should ask for injuries. You just never know. I like that. What about this uh, general warm up? What did we talk about? Main piece of feedback was you would like me to coach the specific warm or the general warm up. So that is what we're going through here. What makes a good coach great? is the ability to see incorrect. One thing to give you credit for, whiteboard brief done, we're moving, it's four minutes, 27 seconds into this class. Move more, talk less. That's what we should be doing. I'll take my own advice. So think about a couple other things that you're doing really well here for those watching. It's very easy in the general warm up here to just let your class go and scatter. Look what's happening. They're super tight, right? All they have is a pair of dumbbells. You can basically be shoulder to shoulder here. One of the easiest ways to coach better is simply controlling where the class is. Now, one of the things you're doing well, using names. Coaches, you might not know everybody at your affiliate, and that's perfectly okay. Before class, hey, what's your name? I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. I've never had the opportunity to coach you. Whether or not you remember that name, like Cody said and like Fern said, is insignificant. It's that you put that effort in to try. Ryan, why did you choose to um, bring everybody into a circle? Too early, too early, and set. The circle allowed me to go to tactile cueing. So this is some feedback that Jay has given me in the past. I needed to improve my tactile cueing. My challenge to you as a coach is, A, determine which, which style of cueing is your go-to and challenge yourself to coach a class either not using that style or primarily using a challenging style for you like Ryan's doing here. Okay, big breath in, big breath out, flex the abs, press. Keep it overhead. And you're doing a great job cueing. I mean, look at all the cues. Like, this is something that cannot be overlooked. Every new step of the way, he's showing them the piece of the progression. Feedback is only good if you implement it. Yeah, I said that about 20 minutes ago. Quick. No, you didn't. We've mostly stolen this from Fern, but you have that bus stop analogy. Yeah. And as you're warming people up, you're basically giving them new scaling options, working towards the RX. 
every new step towards it is a new bus stop. And you're basically dropping people off. Hey, you stay at this bus stop. Cool, we're going to the next one. Cool, we're going to the next one. You guys have the four different variations. We have the strict press. We have the deficit to the mat. We have the handstand push-up. We have the handstand push-up with plates, the deficit. So once you check those boxes, I know, hey, this is where I'm going. As, as coaches, we should get to know our members well enough. We can almost tell them exactly what to do by the, by, you know, certainly when I see them walk in, but by the time they're warmed up, have an even better example of it. When you're scaling someone due to an injury, an acute injury, you do have to be aware of overdoing it. And I stole this from Fern, make coaching binary. Look at this lady in the gray in the front of the room. Comment below if you're watching. Are her elbows up? This woman in gray right here. Are her elbows up? It's yes or no. Uh, Jess says no. Anybody else? Shelby says no. A third up. That's a perfect example of what I do not want, Timo. If I'm like, well, kind of, that person all of a sudden doesn't get a cue. This isn't the best angle. It's not the best angle. Let's assume they're slightly down. Now it's easy. That's not good. I need to cue it. Period. If it's a yes, give them something positive. If it's a no, give them a cue. Go higher, and we got to keep that arm straight. You're going to do two sets of five, increasing in weight to the th weight you think you want to use in the workout. I'm going to run the clock. You guys got three minutes. That's a good thing that you so, just did. Because uh, too often, coaches are like, hey, three minutes. And then what's three minutes to one person is not three minutes to another. The clock is running. At three minutes, we're on to the next evolution, whatever that is. Well done there. Better? Next time, we just need to lift your eyes a little bit. I know you got three of those, though. Hey, first of all. Better, Jim. You're sitting down now. I like this is where like a lot of coaches, we hit that three, two, one, go, and they kind of fade. You're doing a great job giving a lot of cues. And what I liked about that cue to the woman in front there where you said, hey, elbows up, there's follow-up. Well, and what you're doing too is like a nice job, like cueing, but keeping it fun and light. Here's a, here's a little feedback that I would take from here, Ryan. A couple of times I've noticed you've given a cue and they've implemented it. And you immediately gave something different. Okay. Sometimes it's just like celebrate that win. Oh, that was way better. Let's do that again. Right? So I know you're trying to cue a lot and get a lot out there. And I'd rather you err on the side of that for the record, what you're doing. But I also want the, uh, the viewers to know, like, Brian's got his level three. He's been doing this thing for a while. Like, it's okay if you're just like, cool, celebrate that thing he did. And then we move on to the next one. Maybe the next round. Maybe tomorrow. You coaches out there, you need to be in control of your own destiny. If you're at an affiliate that doesn't give feedback, if you're at an affiliate that doesn't have coaches meetings, if you're at an affiliate that doesn't do things the right way, you can leave. You can leave. You, there's 16,000 affiliates in this world. If you're not getting the development and what you need out of your affiliate, don't stay there. Plus, follow best hour of the day because we are the only company making you guys better. We're not asking for money. Right. If you want to sign up for a coach's development, if you want to sign up for affiliate, you cool. We are happy to serve you, but we do this to give back to the CrossFit community that gave us so much. You know, I, I, th I think I just nailed the best things, right? His group management, his presence and attitude, uh, his demonstration spot on, um, stuck to the timeline, exceptional. All that stuff was great. I want to see you really dig into what specific thing needs to be corrected. I think you gave out a ton of cues. There were times I think you could have given out a little more during that specific warm up. I want to see specific warm up from now on, minimum of 3 cues. Non-negotiable for you anymore, Ryan. Next step is just going to be like we were talking about with that dude. I want you to be even better at triaging what exactly is the most important thing I can fix here and then balancing that relentlessness with praise. So Cody, if people want to be on this, they got to follow Best Hour Instagram and check that out because that's how we're going to post and let you guys know where to send it. We're not going to watch a full class every week. Take some notes from Ryan. Good camera angle where we can see the majority of the class and you have to be mic'd. If you're not mic'd, we will not watch it. Ryan, what'd you use to mic up for that class? I have it right next to me. Uh, Beach Run wireless microphone on Amazon and it was not expensive. Ryan, once again, I want to thank you took a lot of courage to come on here, uh, be the first one on here. And um, yeah, that's it, Cody. Take us out. All right. See you guys.